Shubdivas, everyone. Good day. Hoping everybody is doing well and in good health. Danyavad, thank you for allowing me to present at this conference, the third international conference on natural language processing and applications, NLPA 2022. Although I cannot come in person to see the beauty of India because of this pandemic, still I am fortunate for the acceptance of our paper. I am Carlo Pitalver, currently pursuing my master's degree at the University of San Jose Recoletos, Cebu City, Philippines, together with my mentors and co-authors, Sir Greg Gabison and Sir Ricky Bandalan. I will be presenting our paper entitled Bookshelf, a document categorization for a library using text mining. The abstract, categorizing books and other archaic paper sources to a course reference or syllabus is a challenge in library science. The traditional way of categorization is manually done by professionals and the process of seeking and retrieving information can be frustrating. It needs intellectual tasks and conceptual analysis of a human effort to recognize similarities of items in determining the subject to the correct category. Unlike the traditional categorization process, the author implemented the concept of automatic document categorization for libraries using text mining. The project involves the creation of a web app and mobile app. This can be accomplished through the use of a supervised machine learning classification model using the support vector machine algorithm that can predict the given category of data from the book or other archive paper sources to the course syllabus or course reference they belong to. The introduction, categorization, categorizing and associating books and other archaic paper sources with a course reference or syllabus needs a lot of parameters to be considered. What is it all about? With what course reference or syllabus is associated? Early studies of document categorization in libraries need intellectual tasks and conceptual analysis of an item. In this, there are a lot of parameters to be considered in predicting a document. Books that are related to the syllabus will serve as the basis of the librarians in categorization tasks. Librarians may classify books that they may think will fit the course reference or syllabus based on titles, contents, and chapter headings where the human assignment was used. Considering these parameters in categorizing documents needs a serious conceptual analysis of human ability. On the other hand, some parameters are not sufficient to justify the target label of the documents. Some titles and subject headings can be present across categories or an absence from all categories that may lead to confusion and misclassification. The study focused on the table of contents and index pages only since it carries the significant components of the document relevant for text categorization. This can provide a cost-effective solution to human classifiers in classifying the books what core syllabus they are assigned for easy reference, efficiency, and improved accuracy. The objectives, the study aims to build software that can automatically categorize or associate books or other archaic paper sources in the library to the course syllabus it is assigned. Specifically, it aims to build a classification model using support vector machine. Number two, develop a system that can provide automatic categorization of documents to course reference or syllabus using mobile and web technologies. And lastly, generate a report of classified books in the web. Here we have here, a few selected related studies. 
and it is in the light of these theories and the related literature that inspires the researcher to develop a bookshelf, a document categorization for library, for library using text mining to ease the work of librarians in categorizing or classifying books to the core syllabus they are assigned for easy reference. The above related studies gave the researcher the idea that the proposed project could be possibly done using the support vector machine, algorithm, RESTful web services, and different tools and innovations. Here we have here the methodology. The systematic software development process of the bookshelf. Actually, the system involves the training phase and the prediction phase. It is divided into training and prediction phase. For the training phase in this part here, we have collected a data set of extracted text from the book's table of contents and index pages using the OCR technology and save them to the database as separate samples. This will undergo pre-processing stage, the data cleansing, and the future, future engineering techniques. And then we split the data into the train, the test, and the validation set, creating a model that will be used for prediction. Okay, for the prediction phase in this part, the test or input data will also undergo the pre-processing stage and will be predicted by the model created with SVM. A test input is assigned to a specific category with a probability likelihood for the threshold that is set 60% or above or greater. Otherwise, it will be assigned to no category. Since uh, some other archive paper or documents from the library has no relationship to some other uh, course reference or syllabus. For the training phase, this part of the section explains how the model is created using the SVM or the support vector machine algorithm and the components of training, evaluating, and building a model on a supervised approach and using it to classify the input documents. The process being used is through gathering con content or text from the books, uh, definitely the table of contents and index pages, which is uh, used in training and building the model. The text from the books, uh, table of contents and index pages are extracted or pulled out using the OCR technology from a mobile app and saved to the database. We considered six relevant books for course reference or syllabus of different authors for each category in training the model in this project. For the text processing, this includes text cleaning, tokenization, removal of stop words, lemmatization, the engram, and the TFIDF, or the term frequency inverse document frequency as the feature engineering technique. These are pre-processing and feature engineering techniques that were applied during the training and creation of the model and the prediction of input data. Here I'm be discussing the run through of an example document and the uh, example of the data set on how it uh, undergo uh, the text processing uh, method. For the text cleaning, this phase applies the removal of unwanted characters, some special characters, numbers, and punctuations present in the data set, and input data using the regular expression. Converting all text to lowercase is also applied in this process. Here, as we can see, an example input data from the book's table of contents captured from the bookshelf app using the OCR technology. As you can see here, some numbers here, numbers, special characters, the words that cannot be read are uh, removed by the use of the text cleaning process. Okay, so the, after the text cleaning process, if you notice, the numbers were removed. Some special characters were also removed. 
and all um, the letters are converted into lowercase. And then for the tokenization in the preprocessing uh, phase, this is the next step wherein the text or word sequences are converted into tokens. This process removes the white spaces and other special characters or punctuations such as these curly braces, the bracket, the open close parentheses, and many more from the text or document. Since this carries um, insignificant uh, feature for, uh, for relevant for text categorization. Each word sequence is converted into tokens. So we need to identify the words that constitute a string or characters. This is important because the meaning of the text could easily be interpreted by analyzing the words present in the text. This is also very important in the next step of the process, which is the limitization. For the limitization, uh, here is an example of tokenization process. As you notice that each word is separated a single entity here or tokenized which is ready for uh, or which is ready for our data set. For limitization, the next step is the limitization process. This process groups together the inflected forms of a word so they can be analyzed as a single item. It takes the morphological analysis of the words and limitization can be done after the tokenization process. Okay, so in, in limitization process, Example here, if you notice that some words are present like uh, objects, which is in plural form, the vectors also which in plural form, after the limitization process, each word here is now uh, reduced to the root word so that uh, it can be analyzed only as a single item. So here, the limitization process is done after the tokenization. So here, this is an example of a run-through uh, input data coming uh, after, after our uh, OCR extraction from the mobile app. Okay, for the next step is the removal of stop words. This process removes auxiliary verbs and prepositions. Uh, these words are considered to be unnecessary words, which are less informative and are filtered out before processing the data set and input data. Stop words include to, at, as, at, an, a, what, where, on, and many other which are unnecessary and irrelevant are or were removed. In this project, we have added some custom stop words as well to the existing library of stop words from NLTK in Python, considering also the chapter, bibli bibliography, summary, the review, the quiz, and many others, which also carry less meaning to a document, were removed. Misspelled words are corrected automatically using the Python speller uh, library. Non-words were also removed from the dataset to minimize the noise during the training. So here is the example input data after the stop words and removal process. If you notice that the stop words like and, to, what, where, and the, the custom stop words, which we have created in the database, were also removed because they are unnecessary and irrelevant for the training process. And uh, the next step is the engram. The basic point of engram is that they capture the language structure from the, st from the statistical point of view, like what letter or word is likely to follow the given one. It helps capture important differences between the two documents. In this project, we set the parameters of engram to unigram and bigram. So if the engrams are too short, it may fail to capture important differences. On the other hand, if they are too long, it may fail to capture the, uh, the general knowledge 
and only stick to particular cases. That's why we chose only the unigram and bigram for this project. First of all, it can help in deciding which n-grams can be chunked together to form single entities like uh, one token binary, another token three can be um, chunked together into single entity binary three, which is very good in, uh, uh, let's say, in mining text, since we are targeting the table of contents and index pages from, from the input and the data that the data set uh, and and for our data set. And another one here is the bubble sort. The bubble and the sort is also being chunked as one word, which has a significant effect in mining text for a particular category. So it helps uh, increase this uh, single word in our next uh, process, which is the TFIDF in which uh, we can be sure that these words is uh, truly unique to this document and can be given a greater a greater weight and is very significant or has significant effect in uh, mining text to a particular category. So here is an example input data of, after applying the n-gram. If uh, we notice, it's uh, already some here are chunked together like uh, like uh, bubble sort no. the breed first which is in in data structures like bubble sort which is uh, very good uh, in mining text where we have also the the like like, like array you no know, array approximate array heap and some other uh, words which are uh, relevant in text mining. And then uh, for, for the feature engineering technique, we chose TFIDF. And uh, I'll be discussing why TFIDF compared to other feature engineering against other feature engineering techniques. So before we can start training our data set, it should be represented in the form of a vector. So this is with the help of TFIDF, <clears throat> excuse me, for term frequency inverse document frequency as the feature engineering algorithm. This is a very common algorithm to transform text into a meaningful representation of numbers, which is used to fit a machine algorithm for prediction. In this project, TFIDF vectorizer from sklearn has been used to transform text to feature vectors that can be used as input to estimator. So it creates a set of its own vocabulary from the entire set of documents. So both training data and input data will undergo this process. Okay, so if we try to look at the algorithm process of TFIDF, here we have here this uh, formula where TF, the number of uh, times term T appears in a document and uh, IDF where N, here is the number of documents and the DF document frequency of the term frequency. The good thing of using this TFIDF that this is performed by looking at how many times a word appears in a training data while also paying attention to how many times the same word appears in the input data in the corpus. So in each vector, the number weights or the numbers or weights represent features TFIDF score. So TFIDF helps those unique words to come up and then those uh, uh, common words which uh, are common across to some other categories or targets are given a low score and uh, which is uh, given uh, uh, less no, attention for our uh, algorithm to process. So only, only those words which are very unique to this document will uh, come up high and can be seen by our algorithm and, and uh, can really 
help and has really great effect in mining techs to uh, different categories. So here is an example result of the FIDF values and scoring of each word from the input data. Here, an example here, we scanned the table of contents of the input data. We scanned uh, an example of uh, data structures and algorithms textbook. And as we can see here that the tree is more likely has the uh, greater, uh, has greater weight compared to some other uh, words which are present across other uh, category. And then we have also the programming, the case assignment library, the algorithm, the programming. And then uh, these are uh, given more uh, emphasis and uh, has greater weight and many more, many, many other words here that come up high, that may uh, come up high. Okay, so here's the table with the list of some categories and the highlighted features or keywords from the data set. We, we uh, may be able to display here some uh, uh, list of some highlighted features from data structures. These are our uh, target or, or classification label. Let's say data structures, as we can see that, that Q is very high if, if our input data consists also of the word Q, definitely this will go to this uh, target label. Okay, so, or to this category. And then we have also the abstract, abstract data. The tree is here, the system standard argument approach and many more. For the networking, we have also some highlighted uh, features here that come up high. For the systems analysis, we have also here. So for system analysis, we have the leader uh, flow diagram, use case, and for probability and statistics, we have population normal curve mean, probability, and uh, et cetera here. Okay, so uh, for the algorithm, we, we, we use the support vector machine because all of the above steps and our processing steps that will lead us to use the data set results for the SVM to process. In this project, we used SVM as the classifier with a linear kernel, which means the data is linearly separable by a straight line. And drawing the line that separates the classes from one another is the idea behind SVM that there is no mixing, mixing of classes on both sides of the line. So it splits the data in the best possible way, or the line has the maximum space or margin that separates the two classes. In, in technical terms, we can say that the distance between the support vector and the hyperplane should be as far as possible or has the maximum distance to the support vectors of any class. From the distance margin, we can get the optimal hyperplane. Once we have created the optimal hyperplane, we can easily see which side the new data or input data fits in. Okay, so we have here, if we try to uh, uh, investigate the math intuition behind this uh, algorithm, which is the SVM. So we have here the hyperplane uh, equation, which is this as uh, W transpose X plus B, which is our slope, which is equals to zero. And B is the intercept and bias term of the hyperplane equation. Now we have seen how to present data points and how to fit a separating line between the points. But while fitting the separating line, we would obviously want such a line that would be able to segregate the data points in the best possible way, having the least mistakes or errors of misclassification. Okay, so to have the least errors in the classification of the data points, that concept will require us to first know the distance between a data point and the separating line giving us this formula. So while making the predictions on the training data, which were binary classified as possible, uh, positive and negative groups, if the points is substituted from the positive group 
in the hyperplane equation, we will get a value greater than zero mathematically. So we have here the WT of X plus B, which is greater than zero, which is all, all, always positive, lying on the positive uh, uh, other side of the hyperplane. And the predictions from the negative group in the hyperplane equations would give negative value, which is also ne always negative, lying on the other side of the hyperplane. Okay, so from the math intuition of SBM, giving the formula of Y, which is the W transpose X plus zero, considering this uh, formula, and consider giving the value of the data point negative four and zero, and the slope represented by this formula, which is the W transpose X plus B equals zero, giving us this matrix, which is negative one and zero, and we will compute it using the matrix multiplication will give us four and any value given given here will be multiplied to this matrix is going to be always positive that lies on the positive side of a hyperplane now if there is a value that lies on the other side of the slope for example given the value of four for the data point of four and four, again, computing it with the given matrix negative one and zero as a slope using matrix multiplication, it will give us a negative four. So any value here, again, multiplied with this matrix will give, will give us, it's going to be, negative so with this we can consider all the positive values as one group and all the negative values will be another group or class taking the d and the d plus and d minus intuition so that is how sbm works and uh, let's try to see how it is uh, visualized using our plot here so after everything we have this result set that clearly shows the separation between the two expected classes and then we can derive the decision boundary or a hyperplane at this particular point so that this one here may be considered as one category the remaining will be considered as um, may may lie into uh, another category considering the binary uh, the binary classification using the SBM. So for training evaluation and model creation, when the data set is ready, it will be evaluated and the process begins by splitting the data set using the train test split of sklearn into training and test sets. Okay, so we 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 take 70% went to the training set while 30% went to the testing set. We train the model on training set and evaluate model on test set until the best result is obtained and save the model. The performance of the model has met 90% accuracy. So for cross-validation technique has been applied also to validate and evaluate the model on data samples using 20% of the records, which is 20%. 80 to 20 split with five folds. Here we achieve a mean accuracy score of 0.95 after evaluating with a cross val score with our data set with this shape, which is a decent, decent classifier. Okay, so as we can see, after uh, uh, the model, uh, after training the model, we have registered the accuracy result of SVM using the one versus stress classifier compared to other classifiers after validation and evaluating them using the cross validation test with our data set. Okay, so we have here, uh, we have registered here using the same data set, using different uh, classifiers or algorithms, and SVM clearly outperforms the other classifiers in terms of accuracy which only multinomial 
registers 0.88 percent but but uh, one versus rest classifier registers 0.95 percent and the random forest classifiers registers registers only 0.76 percent with our given data set for the model creation model creation has been developed using the one versus rest approach of svm or the support vector machine algorithm of sklearn with a linear kernel that will be used for prediction of input data or test data each document can be in exactly one or no category this can be achieved by using a probability estimate of svm and setting the probability threshold such as 60 percent where the highest value equal or greater than the threshold are mapped to one class or otherwise predicted as no category. So we chose uh, we chose SVM. Still, we chose SVM over other classifiers since SVM has uh, uh, the feature or capability also with uh, the probability estimation. Okay, so we have here, uh, as we have predicted here, from uh, our uh, from from the plot no? using the Jupyter notebook, which is our confusion matrix, and as you can see here, only uh, this uh, categories here has misclassification, but uh, it is uh, low compared to correctly uh, correctly. Uh, classified uh, test input. Okay, for the classification report, for the recall, F1 score and support, as we can see here, here represents uh, our uh, target or label or, or our uh, classification ID here that registers some uh, reach uh, 100% considering our data set which is only uh, not that not that large since uh, svm is also very good in uh, in uh, handling uh, uh, smaller data set okay so for the our accuracy it registers it registers 90% uh, uh, accuracy okay for the prediction this is the flow of our prediction. Our input data is captured text by OCR from the mobile uh, application. From the book, we will capture the cover page, the table of contents from the Android mobile app, and send it for evaluation. And then the eval it will be evaluated, the evaluate captured text table of contents by the model that have been created in SPM algorithm. We're going to save the result of prediction and the captured text from the cover page and table of contents in the database. And finally, we're going to query the database and display report from the web app. Okay, so here is the prediction result of the input data with probability estimates of each class. Okay, so as we can see here, our input data, as I have mentioned before, it is the data structures and algorithms uh, textbook and it registers 0.89% compared here to some other uh, uh, target or label. Here first we have here the networking, we have here systems analysis and design, here we have here the uh, data structures and algorithms, that's why we have uh, displayed it here and the rest of uh, some other labels and we notice here if we try to look at the prob probability estimate capability of SBM that some other um, targets or classifications ID here registers a very low probability estimate. Okay for the architectural diagram here it is the data set as I have uh, mentioned a while ago, all the processes on how to create a data set. First is we have here, we, 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 select, we have selected uh, six uh, textbooks from different authors. 
we scan the books table of contents and index pages as separate samples. We tried it uh, integrating table of contents and index uh, page as uh, as one feature. It results to uh, poor accuracy. Okay, so we have separated it and uh, tried it again, and it results to, to a good accuracy uh, for the model. Okay, so, and then after that, if we already captured it from the table of contents and its index pages, we will send it to the database or using the MySQL, and then it will undergo the text processing technique, as I have mentioned a while ago. And the feature engineering, which is the limitization and gram and TF IDF. And then finally, we're going to build our model. Okay, to, to uh, for the prediction of input data, okay, the same here, we're going to use the OCR. But uh, this time for the input data, which is the unseen, uh, unseen uh, uh, library document or test document. We're going to scan only the table of contents using also the OCR. By the way, we have uh, the, we have an app here for data set creation, and we have also an app for uh, uh, classification. Okay, so and then after that, we're going to uh, pass it uh, for text processing and feature engineering as well, and then. Uh, the created model will going to predict our test input and we're going to save it to the database and we're going to uh we can we can see the report or summary of categorized documents display in the web using using uh, our web technology so that's it so the librarian can now use this uh, application without uh, really exerting more effort on her or his uh, intellect intellectual ability in classifying this uh, uh, particular textbook or library document to specific syllabus or course reference. For the conclusion, the categorization of books or other archaic documents to a specific target or class is affected by many factors, such include the collection of relevant data sets or corpus, the feature engineering techniques, and applying regular expressions, such as removing unnecessary words. The selection of the, of the, of the algorithm classifier type suitable for the requirements of the project has a contribution also in the categorization task. The use of support vector machine as the algorithm is very well suited for this project and the related projects that do not need a large corpus or data set. The observation and experimental results show that SVM achieved good performance on text categorization tasks compared to other existing classifiers significantly with the given data set. The SVM classifier yielded an accuracy of 0.95% during the five-fold cross-validation technique that outperforms other classifiers. These mobile and web-based application software are intended to solve the problems of librarians in categorizing books and other archaic documents to the course reference or syllabus. It provides automatic categorization for efficient, effective, and improved accuracy. Okay, so we, um, we, we, we have developed this system to help librarians to uh, in classification this uh, uh, library document to a specific course syllabus since this is very important most mostly in um, in accredit in accreditation uh, activity like here in the Philippines we have the Pakokoa accreditation in which uh, the accreditor may want to uh, know what are the library textbooks that are available for this particular 
syllabus. So it really helps uh, the librarians with this uh, technology. For the recommendations, the researcher highly recommends the use of support vector machine or the SVM for the requirement of this project and other document categorization for multi-class classification tasks. A keen and careful approach to removing unnecessary words from the extracted text in the table of contents and index pages definitely improves the performance of the model. Words or other languages aside from English may be considered as an account as well. Lastly, future research, uh, research should also be able to build a classifier that can classify or categorize the books or other archaic documents with more than one category or the multi-label instead of multi-class classification. Future research should also build a model using incremental online training that can incorporate updates from the new unseen data to the existing model's position of learning uh, position of learning accuracy if the data set is too large already to fit in the memory. So, Danyavat, thank you very much for allowing me to present 